delivery gone for nothing. With Western Union, you can send money online to bank accounts overseas for zero sender or receiver transfer fee when you pay with Poli. Download the Western Union app today. Western Union also makes money from currency exchange. Lawn bowling is more than just a game. There's no talking on the green. Genuine 1972 prices. They're nothing. They're soft. They stick it right up. Them, right up. Welcome to Without Bias. Local legends wanted. The Bowls Green is just up the road. Search Bowls Clubs near me. Stay engaged with the sport via The Bowl Show. Sundays on 7-2 from 2.30pm. Uh, wonderful to have your company and welcome to Without Bias, our dedicated lawn bowl show on SEN. All thanks to the bowl show, Sundays on 7-2 from 2.30pm and we do it all for Apia. We're all about possibility. Sam Hargraves filling in for Jack, of course, joined by uh, one of the greats, one of our favourites in the world of lawn bowls, Barry Lester. Hello to you. Sam, uh, very excited about this show, mate. Uh, Joey's one of my favourites, so um, yeah, pleasure being on the show. Oh, well, that's a beautiful segue, so we might as well welcome in one of your favourites, one of our favourites, and uh, the woman who was just crowned as the Commonwealth Games Australia International Female Bowler of the Year on Thursday night, uh, Bowls Australia Virtual Awards Night. Uh, Kelsey Cottrell, hello to you. Hi, how's it going? Well, we're very well. Uh, congratulations, um, what was uh, how does that sit with you uh, a few days later? Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's got a pretty cool ring to it. <laughs> um, I suppose yeah, I've been trying to to crack a big award like that for a long time, and um, probably a bit unexpected. It, you know, obviously with COVID, we've had a bit of a break. Um, so yeah, sort of forgot some of those events. <laughs> you know, it seems like such a long time ago. But yeah, really happy. Um, to, have, to have won it and to be voted by your peers is obviously a great um, thrill. And Joey, it's obviously a fantastic honour and, and is it just a, a moment, just especially with what's gone on the last few months, just to be able to sit down and reflect and say, you know what, throughout the period we've been busy playing international bowls, but it's good to just sit down and reflect that, you know, I have done a right in my career and, and it's good to get that recognition. Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, it was um, exciting when I got the phone call to yeah let me know that I'd won. And, and when we sort of went through, because at the time I was like, oh, okay, what events was that? Like, I need to think about, you know, did I play that good? <laughs> um, so I was kind of trying to remember what, what I'd played in and what I'd won at those events. And um, we sort of went through them and it was, you know, four, you know, good events like Trans-Husbands and Multinations and things like that. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's a... It was. I felt really honoured to have, I suppose, have to have won it and, and to have maintained such a high level a high standard over across four events and across the whole 12 months. Um, and, you know, sort of combined with, you know, at the end with the, the World Team Cup, which was a great event. It was obviously a little bit of fun, but it was also uh, very competitive, um, taking on the rest of the world. So, Kelsey, you mentioned the, uh, the the multi-nations, the World Bowls Challenge. You had the two Trans-Tasman Test Series, and you got to resume the uh, coveted Blue Ribbon Singles position. So, it's a year where would you feel like it was a, a big step forward in, in your output uh, on the green? Yeah, well, I think when I, I think back to... Um I suppose how I was playing before those events, I probably wasn't overly happy. I was very, you know, really working through a few different things and just trying to get back into some really good form. So at least now I can sort of, yeah, reflect on that and think, well, I succeeded in with being able to, I suppose, you know, maintain that high standard and, and get back to where I wanted to, you know, to be at, at an international level. Like years ago, I really prided myself on playing my, my absolute best when I put on the green and gold. And I think, I sort of let that slip a little bit, and um, yeah, just really happy to have got that back, and, and I suppose cement my you know spot in the World Bowls team. Because at the end of the day, those four events were all you know selections for World Bowls, um, and that was the the cherry at the end of it. And Kelsey, I'm not sure where you were at the time that the awards night was uh, going down, the virtual night, and uh, love to get your sort of um, you know feedback on on how it was all run. But um, it was also good to I guess. Um, you know, identify and reward all those volunteers, players, officials and clubs out there that have done a great job the last 12 months? Yeah, it was really um, it was really cool. Uh, Andrew and I both had it on. <coughs> so I had it on my iPad and Andrew had it on his phone. <laughs> and then we had Sienna, you know, probably not eating her dinner or not doing something that we were needing, to do, <laughs> needing her to do or having baths and stuff. So it was kind of, it was a really interesting night because I'm thinking to myself, 
you know, had this been last year, we'd be, you know, at a, you know, at a big formal presentation. Everyone would be in the room together and everyone would be mixing and mingling. So it was really quite different to watch it virtually. Um, but it was good to be able to, I suppose, pause, go back. I never missed anything. <laughs> I was able to sort of potter around and do what I had to do um, at night and, um, and then watch it. And then, um, yeah, it was really cool for Sienna to be able to watch um, me, you know, make my speech and things like that. And um, But it was just a, I think it was just a great... Uh, uh, it would have been put it this way, it would have been very disappointing if, you know, at the end of 2020 we we didn't have an awards night. So I think it was fantastic that Bob Australia took the initiative to do it online. Um, from what I could see, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of people watching and it was great recognition for everyone and to see the different clubs and volunteers that have, that have done so well and have contributed so much to Bowls, especially during COVID. Kelsey, as we look through the award winners, um, and there were some fantastic... Uh, I suppose it was just wonderful to see and, 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 and some fantastic achievements that were recognised throughout the course of the night. But um, the, the Community Service uh, Award uh, went to Club Sapphire. Marimula, the Volunteer of the Year, went to Gary Costigan, uh, Costigan sorry, in uh, Thuringawa in, uh, in Queensland. The Coach of the Year, Gary Willis. Uh, the Club of the Year, the Dandenong Club and the South Perth Bowling Club. Uh, the bowler with the disability of the year was uh, Jake Felberg from Burley Heads in Queensland. The under-18 female bowler of the year was Kira Burke and Tweed Heads. Uh, the under-18 male bowler of the year, Kane Nelson from Belmont Services in Queensland. Uh, the male bowler of the year was Peter Taylor from Aston Villa, New South Wales. The female bowler of the year, Genevieve Delves uh, from Raymond Terrace in New South Wales. You were, of course, the international female bowler of the year. Uh, and Corey Wedlock, at 24 years of age, took home the international male bowler of the year. It's really exciting, isn't it, to see just the, the, the breadth of talent that are coming through the ranks, um, not just in the men's team, but, but also uh, in the women's. Yeah, it was fantastic. And I was actually really impressed with the two, the two young kids, our under-18 award winners. They made some fantastic speeches. They were really organised. They, they had the speeches written out. They, they really looked the part, so I think they did themselves really proud. Um, and, of course, Corey as well, getting to finish the night on, on such a high with, um, I suppose, a... A new, a new face in the Australian team. Uh, some of us probably feel like we've seen Corey forever, but um, for, for other people, they've probably only just started to sort of watch him on TV and, and get to see how talented he is. Um, and I, I think as well, the, the start of the night and the Marimula, the, the guys, also, the three guys sitting there from the Marimula um, and what they've been through with the bushfires, it was um, quite an emotional start of the night. But yeah, like just a fantastic um, way to, to celebrate a tough year. And a well-deserved break coming up for you, Joey. You're expecting your second baby only um, not long away now. How how long exactly will it be until you are a mother again? And are you looking forward to an added <laughs> challenge? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's it's probably more about Sienna, our, our little three-year-old. Um, uh, when I sort of go go somewhere, it's all you know, Sienna. Are you having a little brother or sister? And and then she you know, thinks it's sort of her baby. Um, so yeah, it's it's exciting for the for the whole family. But yeah, I've officially got 13 days to go. But um, yeah, to take a few off would be would be lovely because it's getting really hot up here in Queensland. <laughs> So how long will you take off, Kelsey? Uh, when will we see you uh, back uh, as a jackaroo? Um, yeah, I'm not really sure. I mean, I suppose COVID's still playing a bit of a part, you know, waiting for borders to reopen. And um, we've been talking about having this reactivation camp where we can all get together as a jackaroo squad and, um, you know, and, and get back into the swing of things at, a, at that kind of international level and start preparing for World Bowls. So... Um, hopefully that's sooner rather than later. But yeah, definitely been looking at the calendar and, and seeing what's you know what's out there in the, in the opening few months of, of next year. Obviously, be a nice little break over Christmas, and um, I've I've had a fair a fair break through COVID, just the way it sort of worked out with I suppose being pregnant, concentrating on my career, um, you know, just the with the borders being closed. Most of my bowls I play out of Sydney, so with with Sydney being a hotspot and Queensland not opening the borders. Um, yeah, I've, I've had a nice break. So, yeah, really looking forward to getting back into it sooner rather than later without um, without pushing to, <laughs> without trying to, you know, get back out there straight after Christmas. But I think maybe midway through Premier League season, it might be nice to just have a, have a game or two 
um, if I'm needed, and um, and then go from there. Well, we're going to take a break and come back. We're speaking to Kelsey Cultural, Barry Lester here as well. Sam Hargraves on Without Bias, our dedicated lawn bowls show on SEN. Uh, we do it all for Apia, dedicated specialists, ready to help. Call 1350.50. That's 1350.50. Apia, get, set, go. Uh, stay engaged with the sport via the bowl show too. Sundays on 7-2 from 2.30 p.m. Don't go anywhere on the other side of this. We'll speak about the year ahead. Uh, and there's been a big retirement in the international bowl scene, which we'll have a chat about as well. Don't go anywhere. This is Without Bias on SEN. From the wide outdoors to the great indoors, this is Without Bias. Local legends wanted. Search bowls clubs near me. The Bowl Show, Sundays on 7-2 from 2.30pm. Welcome back to Without Bias on SEN, our dedicated show, all for the wonderful world of bowls, and we do it for Apia. We're all about possibilities. The Bowl Show, don't forget, Sundays on 7-2 from 2.30pm. Sam Hargroves, Barry Lester, one of our favourite jackaroos, uh, and we are speaking to the recipient of one of the most prestigious awards in bowling, and that is the International Female Bowler of the Year. Uh, it was announced on Thursday night at the Virtual Awards Night. Uh, Kelsey Cottrell is with us, and uh, that certainly uh, is good enough for me for a legendary moment. Uh, local legends wanted search bowls clubs near me. Uh, Kelsey, we were speaking about uh, your, the layoff that's uh, just uh, around the corner for you as you're expecting your second. When you look at the calendar ahead for next year, have you sort of mapped out the events that you think I'll, I'll absolutely be targeting those? Um, well, not yet. It's a, a strange scenario for me. I actually have played at St. John's Park for the last 11 years and um, have you know, sit and found out that I don't have a contract for next year. So it's been um, an interesting time for me trying to get planned and organised where I'm going to play, um, whether I'm going to come back in and, and play for Queensland or whether I want to stay playing down in Sydney. So lots of things up in the air. But yeah, definitely looking... Um, Probably, uh, as I mentioned just before the break, probably that reactivation camp with the Jackaroos is probably the thing that um, I'm probably most looking forward to, just being able to see all my mates again and and get together and um, start planning, you know, uh, I suppose our next six months in the lead up to the World Championships. Barry, surely you're going to go on a recruitment spree right here, right now, aren't you? Oh, yeah, I'm always I'm always at our at our club secretary looking for the paperwork that a membership form comes through with Kelsey Cotter written on it, but uh, just haven't come through the desk the last few days, Sammy. But um, look, uh, Kelsey, we wish you all the best wherever you do end up, um, you know, playing the majority of bowls and all that. And and with the new year coming up, is there something that sort of stands out for you in terms of you know, okay, it's going to be a busy year with uh, another family member joining you, but is there something that you're like, you know, I'd love to do well in that or win that or or really try and tick that box come uh, come the new year. Um, there's probably a couple of things. Um, I'm probably the, the first thing is I'm, uh, I will miss um, the first BPL um, because I wasn't available for the one in November. Uh, because obviously been premium, so Kira Burke's taking my spot for the Brisbane. So really looking forward to seeing her get a chance to play on TV for um, the Brisbane Pirates. Um, but yeah, going forward after that, um, I'm actually I'm. Probably strange, but I'm actually just probably looking forward to the Australian Open. It was, you know, really disappointing that that didn't go ahead this year. And so, yeah, I suppose midway through the year, having a, a really big Australian Open would be fantastic. Um, yeah, playing playing with my mates again, and um, we didn't get a chance to defend our title this year, so we're going to try again next year. So the the World Bowls Championships they've been postponed until September seventh uh, to nineteenth on the Gold Coast. Uh, Obviously, it's it, it's sort of timed out pretty well for you to take that break. Is is that another event that you've got uh, firmly in your sights, Kelsey? Yeah, absolutely. I, it it scares me a little bit, to be perfectly honest. But you know, at the moment, our international borders are not open, and, and some countries are really struggling getting you know their COVID cases under control. So I think, oh gosh, I you know really hope it goes ahead because. You know, we've um, gone through the the torment of having a you know, postponed and then postponed again. And if it was to get postponed again, um, I think that would be heartbreaking for for all the players from any country that have been selected. So, yeah, fingers crossed um, that it does go ahead because, yeah, we're all obviously all really looking forward to it. And the fact that it's on the Gold Coast, um, just around the corner, is, is perfect for me. Um, yeah, it would be absolutely fantastic if we can get that um, event up and running. And Sam, I always tell a story about Kelsey when we first met. Uh, 
Kelsey, you, you, we, we, I think you were 14 when I first met you in Melbourne, your first sort of Australian camp or trial. Um, and, you know, I've been able to get to know you really well over the years and see you not only become uh, a legend bowler, but now a mother and mother to be again soon. And I'm absolutely, like when I said you're one of my favourites, I admire how you guys go about it, uh, juggling everything behind the scenes to be, you know, top of the perch athlete. So um, well done to everything you've done. And uh, I can't wait to see, you know, you get back out there next year and do your, do your stuff and, and uh, be in that camp environment again like you say you miss your mates and i miss you and miss everyone else and it's it's been a hard road down that track this year but um yeah i'm definitely wishing you all the best for the new year yeah thanks Buzz. yeah i suppose that when i when i had sienna i was really determined to get back out on the green as, as soon as i caught i sort of felt like i really wanted to you know not just myself but a couple of the other girls that had had kids and just wanted to really show that yeah, there might be long balls, and some people might think it's a bit of an older person's sport, but um, us young ones, are, you know, we, we're here and, um, you know, we need a bit of support. We want to we wanna have a family, but we still want to play. We don't want to um, go into, re- you know, retirement in our 20s or 30s because we've had kids. So, yeah, I was really determined to get back out there as soon as I can and, and keep winning and putting my best foot forward, and um, that's not going to change next year. Hey, Kelsey, just on that, um, we had the... Um, uh the, the the pleasure of having uh, new bowls Australia president um, Bob Borman on last week, and he was really really adamant on one of the the, the real key pillars of what he wants to achieve over um, his tenure as president was really a lot to do with bridging the gap between the uh, the the women and the men bowlers and, and making sure that there were the right pathways were there to, to play in uh, in an administration sense and uh, there was a, a lot that Bowls Australia were really investing into about making sure that they were investing themselves back into women and, and doing everything they can to to make sure that, uh, that, that that women were being absolutely brought on in the same way that, that the men have been over the years uh, and so a lot of um, attention and money and, and time going into that area. Yeah, look, there's no hiding the fact that, you know, female membership has always been a lot lower than, than men and then and we've, you know, had challenges over the years and I'm sure, you know, in men's roles, you know, there's challenges as well. But just speaking on behalf of the women, you know, I have always found it hard having to play championships during the week and pennants and things like that. So um, I think we've sort of almost gone full cycle, you know. We probably missed the boat to really... Um, you know, play a lot of our stuff on the weekends. We're actually now probably at a point where we've just got to offer a lot of variety. You know, we're living in this crazy world, 2020, and, um, you know, we've got, you know, young girls that are going to uni, um, you know, um, you know, girls that are working. Some work, have to work nights, some have to work days, some work weekends, you know, to make more money and, and are happy to play during the week. So I think we've just got to offer a lot of variety on the sort of what's left in the last 10 years for women in and, and Joey, uh, we've had a big announcement the last sort of week or two with with the retirement of Joe Edwards, and you've seen her play up close and personal a lot the last sort of ten plus years. And uh, t- tell us a bit about Joe Edwards and, and the fact that yeah, she's uh, she's retired and, and where she sits in terms of uh, opponents that you've played against over the years. Yeah, I think firstly, um, I obviously took everyone by surprise. Um, Usually, I suppose when a big retirement in, in the, the, the you know sport of bowls comes up, it's usually post a, a, a big event. Um, so to see her retire before the World Championships, um, yeah, it was a bit of a shock. Um, look, I suppose uh, as a, as a competitor, and it's probably a good thing, probably a good thing for Australia because she's without a doubt the best player in the world um, and has been for a long time. So yeah, look, um, yeah, shocked, but um, you know. I'm, I suppose, happy for her that she's, you know, come to that that decision and she's she's happy with that decision. Um, she's left a fantastic legacy um, for for bowls in, in I suppose, in New Zealand itself. I think she's done, a, a, you know, absolute wonders for the sport in New Zealand. But um, across the whole world, everyone looks up to Joan and what she's achieved, um, and everyone knows that she's set the bar for, uh, I suppose, probably the last two decades. Really, um, the fact that she's won so much. Um, in the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere over such a long period of time is yeah, it's such a credit to her. And um, she's going to be missed. Um, she's a good, good competitor. There. She's a great person to have a chat to after the game. And um, yeah, so she'll definitely be missed. But um, yeah, good, good luck to her with all her future endeavours. 
So, Kelsey, um, we're speaking to Kelsey Cottrell, of course. Uh, Jackaroo and uh, the International Women's Bowler uh, of the Year announced last Thursday at the, the Bowls Australia Awards. Uh, when we speak about someone like uh, uh, Joe Edwards, 646 caps for New Zealand, three-time Com Games gold medalist, pioneer of the sport, um, a six-time winner at the World Cup, uh, World Bowls Championships, Commonwealth Games, as we've just said, uh, has played in the, uh, the Bowls Premier League here as well. Um, what's when you think about legacy for her? What what do you think stands out the most for you? Um, look, I think that the fact that she's played you know six hundred and fifty odd games, in, in terms of if 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 she had done that in Australia, it would actually probably be more because there's a lot of events that we count that, that New Zealand don't. Um, I know over the years, if um, New Zealand have competed at a trans person and they've had more than five players or a multi nation, they don't actually count that towards their international caps. So if she was, you know, if she was an Australian, she'd probably be cracking a thousand. So I think um, just the, the longevity of the sport is is amazing. Um, uh, I think as well, just uh, I suppose her versatility, the fact that she's she's done so well in singles, um, but also the fact that she's been able to, um, you know, skip. Um, so many different players as well um, to so many international medals. Um, yeah, so I suppose a, a real credit to her. She's, yeah, without a doubt, there's, you, you couldn't even, there's, there's no point even going through a, a, a list of people to try and match what she's done or, um, you know, she's just in the, uh, has been in the class of the room for so long. And Kelsey, what, uh, what would be the, I guess, the, ultimate achievement for a lady out there for our for our non-listeners that you know aren't really up to speed with bowls what would be for a female bowler the the creme de la creme title to go out and win you know in, in terms of the saying joe's pretty much won everything what would be the one you can walk away and say i've i've really won the biggest title in lawn bowls um oh um <laughs> i suppose i'll be the world championships um so I suppose to win a, a world singles title, the fact that you've you've done it on your own, um, it's not an easy task being out there by yourself. You, you know, it's a it's a tough um, bit of a, a mental battle being out there by yourself. So the fact that she's been able to do that, um, I think, yeah, it's probably slightly. I probably say the world as well, just because there's more countries involved. But the Commonwealth Games, there's a lot of pressure. Um, the crowds are generally bigger. Um, so, again, the fact that she's won a, a Commonwealth Games gold medal in the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere, um, that's probably probably the probably the, the two. Um, but even just other events over the years, like she's been so successful at things like the Golden Nugget. Um, you know, she's won New Zealand titles. It's just the fact that, yeah, just... I think I think just the consistency. <laughs> you know, like she's never... She's never really gone more than 12 months without winning a, a really big prestigious title. Um, and I think as well when she lived over here in Australia, another, um, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's not, uh, it's not an international event or anything like that, but to see her skip, um, you know, Queensland Premier League and, and knock off Australian players, you know, like, you know, um, Nathan Rice and Aaron Sheriff and Brewer, you know, when she played for Pine Rivers, um, she was a, a real threat and, and, and mm. she skipped against some men. Um, and she, yes, yeah, so I think to be able to have that kind of versatility um, at any event that you go to, um, and to yeah be, I suppose, um, a threat to anyone that you play against is probably, yeah, I suppose, what you aim to achieve. I suppose it's a question from me for both of you when it comes to the greatest you've ever played against, and I'd love to get your take uh, as well, Barry. But Kelsey, uh, for you, um, is it an easy one to, to answer, given that we? We are speaking, um, obviously, about someone who's got the the record that Joe has. Is she the best you've ever played against? Yeah, absolutely. And even if you take the record out of it, even if you rocked up at a game, you didn't know who she was, um, just the way she plays the game. Um, she was, you know, she's such a good draw player, but um, her attacking game as well. When that, when she, when her attacking game was on. She's she's unbeatable. Um, so yeah, no, definitely without a doubt. What about for you, Baz? Oh, I'm I'm with Joey in terms of um, you know Joe Edwards. Obviously, um, you know the, the fact that you can do it on quick and slow. It's I do a lot of coaching at club level and seeing players adjust from different surfaces to different paces to different conditions is it's another level in itself. And you've got to do a lot of preparation training to be able to you know do that and and on the biggest stage. So to see 
the best players such as Joe and Karen and, and Kelsey and all that go all around the world and just keep rocking up and, and playing at the highest level in the varied conditions. And then from a, a male's perspective, you know, when you look at, um, and Kelsey mentioned events like BPL, you'll see an Aaron Sheriff, Alex Marshall, these guys on the carpet, and then throw them on a slow Northern Hemisphere green and it, it looks uh, it looks just as easy for them, you know, in terms of how the, the standard they keep producing on different surfaces and di- different hemispheres. And we are Australian cricketers. We you know, might have struggled a little bit in India over the years. And for lawn bowlers coming out of Australia to go to the Northern Hemisphere on on uh, on interesting surfaces, <laughs> that's one way of putting it, on slow uh, home ground surfaces for Scotland, England, Wales, it's very hard for Australia and, and, and you need to focus a lot on your technique and training and to be able to have the, the gamesmanship and game sense to match it with them. So it's a big component of lawn bowls and the best will always come through because the, that's why they're the best. Well, I think certainly uh, of all those accolades, I'm sure she'd love to know that she's our local legend uh, of the week. Local legends wanted. The Bowls Green is just up the road. Search Bowls Australia, uh, search Bowls Clubs near me. Um, guys, that brings us to the end of our time. But um, we, I suppose we, we want to finish up by just encouraging every single person involved in bowls or wanting to get involved in bowls, just to make sure they're keeping up to date with everything that's happening on the Bowls Australia website. Um, you'll be able to find out if you're a club that's it may be struggling a little bit at the moment. You'll be able to find out what Bowls Australia are doing in terms of passing on fee relief. It's up on the website right now. They've got a COVID hub to give you every bit of information uh, that they've got. Uh, and then some great stories too um, about the Jack Attack. It's been a big hit in Gymea. So keep up to date and make sure you are heading uh, to bowls.com.au. Uh, are you a closing thought for you, Baz, as we say goodbye to Kelsey? Yeah, just uh, thank you for so much for your time, Joey. I know how busy you are and all the best with... Um, you're being a mum again, very exciting, and we can't wait to hear uh, names and, and everything else that goes with it. So um, thanks uh, so much for giving up your time. No, no problem. Thanks for having me. It was, um, yeah, good to have a chat and... Yeah, just good to be talking about bowls again and getting getting excited about it after a you know a tough few months um, with the feet up and, and not having too much to play. It is exciting to start um, talking about the future and, and you know what's around the corner in bowls. Uh, beautifully said, Kelsey Cottrell, the International Women's Bowler of the Year uh, and one of uh, our superstars of our Jackaroos. Hey, uh, Baz. Um, thank you again. It's always a pleasure to spend some time with you. How is everything up in uh, in sunny Queensland at the moment? Yeah, like Joey said, it's it's really steamy at the moment and humid. We're about to get a little storm at the moment. So, but yeah, we we broke a record pretty much on the weekend. Over four hundred barefooters through the club over three days from Friday to Sunday. So very happy with that. And Premier League's around the corner. So uh, Burley Heads will be playing in the Premier League from from January through to March, and that's a, that's a big competition. So that's a, a huge focus at the moment, getting set, set for that, and um, we're hoping to do well. Uh, beautiful. I'm glad you mentioned the barefoot. As the weather gets better, as restrictions ease, depending on what state you're in, um, what better way to catch up with people that you haven't seen in a long time than going and enjoying a night of barefoot bowls. There is no better way to reconnect with those that you haven't been able to see uh, for a long time. Christmas parties. So make sure you do check into your local bowls club. Uh, I've got Elstonwick just around the corner from me, so I can't wait to hit up the greens there. Uh, looking forward to getting out and uh, having a roll again. Baz, we'll speak to you next week. Thanks, Sammy. Uh, that's with our bias for another week. Uh, make sure you don't miss the Bowl Show. Sundays on 7-2 from 2.30 p.m. Stay engaged with the sport via the Bowl Show. And a big thank you to our good friends at Apia, dedicated specialists ready to help. Call 13 50 50. Apia, get, set, go. We'll see you again next week. Sporting Capital continues on SEN straight after this.